Hey all here, OS Reviews. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at Android Pie, aka 9.0, and seeing what some of the new features are. So yes, this update was released at the start of August, so it's already been out for about two weeks now, but I've finally been able to get my hands on a device that has gotten the update, which is a Google Pixel phone, hence why we're taking a look at it right now. So all the Pixel phones plus the Essential phone have received this over-the-air update. Now, at the moment, even the Android One Edition phones have not gotten Android Android Pie yet, but it should be arriving to devices like the Xiaomi Mi A1 and Mi A2 in a couple months. So taking a closer look here, the main lock screen hasn't seen any real changes, but in terms of the UI here, we have some new wallpapers which are also dynamic, so if we want to tap and take a closer look at these. The Aurora time lapse is the one that we currently have it set as, and there are a few new kind of designs that goes with the aesthetic changes within Android Pie. We can also see a change with the drag down notification shade and how the icons are displayed. Uh, the overall styling with these round circles and blue and gray is also new. Overall, I do think it looks rather neat, and notifications also sh show up in the same style as these cards with these small rounded corners underneath. But we still have access to the same functions, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, accessing a flashlight, as well as a nightlight, which uh, turns off the blue light filter and makes the display easier on your eyes when you're viewing it back at night. Really, the biggest difference can be found on the bottom of the phone, and we see the back and the multitasking keys have been eliminated in lieu of a single gesture-based uh, key. The concept here is very similar to what we see in iOS phones with the iPhone X, in addition to some OnePlus devices and other custom ROMs by third-party manufacturers. You're able to do things like swipe up to access multitasking, for instance. It's the same concept that was originally pioneered by Palm and the WebOS ecosystem, but at, la at last, it's found its way onto Android. So what we can do is still tap on it once to essentially go back home, but we can now swipe up to have access to this screen where we have access to all the applications as these cards. And if I don't want to use a particular app anymore, I can just swipe up to close it off from the memory. Now I can also swipe all the way up to have access to a full drawer of applications, so very similar to before. But whereas previously you can just simply swipe up to access your apps, now there's a kind of a two-step process that needs to happen uh, unless you forcibly drag all the way up with a longer motion to bring up all your applications. But the gestures don't end there. I can also swipe to the right from this main bar to bring up all the applications in a larger view where I can then swipe through them one at a time. And there's also haptic feedback, so the phone will physically vibrate whenever you switch to a new application or a new card and easier to transition without having to minimize and kind of lose track of where you are. So that's uh, one other way to multitask if you don't want to use the swipe up to do this. Uh, and you only have access to say one hand and you're using a larger screen device, you can simply swipe from the bottom to access this multitasking bar. Now, by default, the gesture navigation bar is actually turned off, uh, at least on the Google Pixels. So to access that, you have to go into gestures, and then you can tap on the swipe up on home button here to access that, or you can toggle it off to have access to the regular controls for Android navigation. We can also see the other gestures like double tap to unlock and using the fingerprint scanner to see notifications are mostly the same. We saw these uh, on the Google Pixel already in the past. But what has now changed is the slight modification of the ringer controls. So if you tap on the volume key on a Android Pie Edition device, you can see that uh, the visualization is now vertical, which does make a little more sense. And it tends to control the volume uh, by default as opposed to only the ringtones when you're not playing back media content. I think this makes more sense because for the majority of consumers, they'll be adjusting things like media more often than things like Ringer. So uh, you can still do that by tapping on the key here to change between different profiles for silent, vibration, or off. But uh, the toggle here, for the most part, will just adjust the speakers by default. I can also tap on settings to go into more specific sound profiles if I want to get into the nitty gritty. The other elements of Android Pie are, again, mostly aesthetic. It's not a huge, uh, I would say, upgrade compared to Android Oreo 8.1. We still have things like long holding to have access to contextual menus, which is very similar to Force Touch on iOS, but the screen itself doesn't actually register pressure. You simply long hold, so you're able to do things like take an image or access a specific feature without having to go directly into the app itself. So for certain apps like settings, for instance, you can find things like battery, data, Wi-Fi without having to go in. So it does give you a few more kind of um, extra options, especially if you're using a built-in Google app. 
Android Pie Edition also claims to have adaptive battery, which is just a minor optimization, but it uh, tries to limit apps which are using the CPU when your phone is turned off, for instance, in the background, to hopefully increase the battery performance over time. So it's using some machine learning algorithms to help improve that. Really the last feature that has been updated would be the universal search, where it's now able to do something called slice. So it's kind of a play off of Android Pie, a slice of the pie. You're able to see more details that are specific to apps and not only being able to search the web, for instance. So you're able to see things like contacts, uh, if they match whatever you're typing in, or if you're typing in a specific setting or mode, such as brightness, you're able to see the adjustments for the brightness under settings pop up as well. So again, it's reducing the number of steps that you need to take to go into an app and adjust things by having that all as part of the universal search. So that's pretty much all of the major updates and uh, differences with Android Pie compared to uh, Android 8.1. Again, a lot of aesthetic differences which uh, make things feel a little bit more fresh. It feels uh, slightly more sleek with all of these gesture-based uh, navigational options, but uh, they will definitely take some time to get used to, especially with this multitasking approach, which I do think is rather unique and different from what iOS and what OnePlus have uh, offered in the past. And hopefully we'll be seeing more and more updates uh, to existing devices and just new phones in general running on Android Pie in the coming days. Uh, but for now, that's been our closer look. So thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a closer look at Android Pie 9.0.